What's going on guys? I got one hell of a story to tell you. And I turned around and the whole back of my truck is on fire. It started off about two weeks ago. We were up at my family cabin. I brought 10 guys up there. We ground off all the finish on the cabin, get all the stain clean, brought it all back to original, original wood, sanded it with orbital sanders, just made it look beautiful. You know, it, it made it look brand new. You know, and this thing was built in the 50s. Bringing it back to the original, it was pretty dried out wood, you know, nothing serious, but it was, it was still really good wood. But the finish was just horrible on this thing. We got that all ground down and then, you know, after three days of running a grinder, the guys were pretty freaking wore out, so. Well, duh. Kind of sat out there, drank some beers, had a good night, the final night. Next weekend, I was like, well, I'm going to go up and stay in the cabin and one of my buddies came up with me. We pretty much stayed in the entire cabin with three coats using Mesmer's UV Plus natural stain color, put nice finish on it, cleaned up. Everything was just, it was looking real nice. Then my buddy left, he went downtown, he went back to back to his house and me and my wife stayed up there for about oh four or five more hours cleaning up the cabin getting everything dressed back up for the next family that's going to come up or whatever the case may be and i'm cleaning up all the ladders putting them away strapping them in trucks and just kind of cleaning up the place getting ready to go back downtown zero niner you are cleared for takeoff roger so we used a bunch of rags in this process to like clean off the overspill and all that and i know better i mean i'm general contractor for 30 years. I know about stains and spontaneous combustion and all this other stuff, right? For some reason, I ended up putting it in all the rags in a box and just threw them in the back of my truck. That's my first mistake that I made. From that point on, it's about 35 miles to a paved road. Came out in the cabin, you know, kind of drove down, you know, it has beautiful views and it's a real nice relaxing way after th working three long days of putting stain up on the cabin. Everything was going good. Go through the town of Tensleep. It's about 25 miles from Worland. So anyways, get coming back in the town. I'll get about eight miles from town. Look in my rear view mirror coming down this hill that's just right over here. You know, not a big deal. I get to the bottom of the hill. I see flames in my rear view mirror coming out of the back of my truck that are about two foot tall. You know, at that time, panic mode sits in. You know, a lot of choice words were said right about that time. Boom, man, there's a fire day. And it don't that gum that come down everywhere, man. I As I'm slamming on the brakes, I'm pretty sure there's skid mark down here. What happened? Well, let's just take you down there and show you. I'm also on Facebook. Go look it up. 307 Garage. When you're coming down off of this hill, you know, you kind of get the sigh of relief like, ah, oh, yeah, I made it. Everything's going good. Can't wait to sit on the couch. Right about in this time frame right here is about where I seen flames shooting out of the back of my truck. If you look right about here, that little grate right there in my headache rack, there's flames covering that whole window right there. And that's when I thought to myself, I'm in some deep crap. Look what I have created! I have made fire! I have made fire! And if you could look closely, just how fast I shut that thing down, pretty sure those are my skid marks on the road shutting that thing down so then i ran to the back of the truck came around and right up there was the box of rags sitting right next to six gallons of gas and that thing was like a blowtorch going i know horrible idea right yes so what i did is i jumped into the back of that truck about as fast as I possibly could. Wasn't thinking too clearly right then. I was in full panic mode. I did think at that one moment, you know, the truck is only worth about $12,000 because it's a work truck, kind of beat up, you know, whatever. Stay out of the situation, right? But then it dawned on me, they're only gonna give me about $12,000. I'm gonna be 70 more thousand dollars in debt if I don't get this truck out. No. So I jumped in here grab the box of rags with this hand no gloves on mind you fully blowtorch style coming out of there whipped it over to here i'm pretty sure it landed right out in this area and then i was like okay i got it out i got it out well then i looked right here and that six gallons of gas plastic gas can was on fire and i was like oh god 
if that thing goes. Which has been sitting there next to a blowtorch for about, you know, 30 seconds, maybe. I don't know exactly when that thing started. So what I did is I took my left hand and grabbed that thing and whipped it out of there. And when I whipped it out, it must have had a little fuel leak on it already. And it spread throughout the entire back of the truck. Must have had a little pinhole in it and had trash in here and everything else. And right here's where it landed. Here's the leftover plastic and paintbrush. And so then I jumped out of the truck, moved my truck forward because there's six gallons of fuel on fire right beside my truck, along with the box of rags, and realized that my pants are on fire. It probably has three days worth of stain on them at least. Then first thought was stop, drop, and roll like you always think before, right? Well, if you look out here, that is some dry ass grass. So my first thought was I'm gonna get burned worse by stop, dropping, and rolling. So so I started patting it out, trying to make sure that it's all out, wiping it, and I started unbuttoning my belt, and I was about ready to get naked right on the side of the road. Didn't care. Get those pants off, they're on fire. No! No! I did the one last swoosh, and it went out. I don't know why, I don't know how, but it went out. And then I noticed that my hand's on fire. And when my hand's on fire, I didn't know that my hand's on fire because I don't have feeling in three or four of my fingers from years of construction. And so I grabbed my shirt, wrapped it around, put that fire out, and then ran over to my buddy that stopped. I asked him if he had a fire extinguisher. He said, no, but I got a shovel. And I turned around and the whole back of my truck is on fire with all the trash and everything else that's in it. From that gas, when I swung it out, must have had a pinhole and it spread gas throughout the whole back of my truck. Not a whole lot, just enough. I was like, oh crap, you go get that, I'm gonna go put my truck out. So I jumped in the back of my truck thinking I was gonna put it out. All I had was a cooler and an Aqua Vista bottles that were in my cooler. You know, little, little bottles just to drink. One eternity later. Anyways, I put that out, kinda sorta, after, you know, quite the time working on it. By that time, the fire department's here, the ambulance is here, you know, four or five other guys are here. I got to kind of talking to all them, telling you what's up, and the fire marshal says, yeah, that's a very common occurrence of stain and cotton rags getting spontaneously combusted. Idiot! You know, all the traffic that was coming down off the mountain, I had about seven or eight friends wondering what was going on with me, because the ambulance was there and everything else. You know, just a whole mess of stuff went on during that one split second. And it's amazing how fast something like that could just get way out of control. So if I would have grabbed that gas jug two or three seconds later, the whole top would have ripped off, spread fuel all over me, all over the back of the truck. I could be sitting in some major hospital with third degree burns over three quarters of my body if the top of that thing would have ripped off. Or it could have been parked right here, like I usually do. My wife always parks right here and I kind of park a little bit ahead of her. That's a 2022 F350 Power Stroke, one ton, got all the bells and whistles. My fire would have jumped from there to there to my house, or it would have jumped to the tree and to the office and to the shop. So if it happened here, half of my livelihood would have been burned down. Now, if I'd have left the rags up at the cabin and they caught on fire up there, my cabin would have been burned down. And then I could also had possibly one of the biggest forest fires in Wyoming history up there. You just never know because it's right next to the tree. So whatever was going on that day, my guardian angel was looking over the top of me. And I guarantee you, I dodged a bullet there. I'm thankful I'm here. I'm thankful I'm still alive. You know, I got a little burns on my hands, a couple other spots on my fingers over here. That's all that I got. I feel pretty damn lucky to be here right now. Kind of life changing to a point. I haven't been able to work in three or four days. These guys are the money makers. So got to kind of take care of them. But anyways, go check me out on Facebook, 307 Garage. There's my story for last weekend. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was one hell of a ride. Like, subscribe, comment, do the little ding dong things that YouTube wants you to do. And we'll be seeing you in the next one, guys.